Good morning, Hudlers. Good morning. Today's Money Monday. We are here for episode 586 of the Daily Huddle. And welcome to all of you, wherever you are. Stacy, I've got a question for you, man. Yeah. Why do you think we call money dough? Why do we call money dough? <laughs> because we all need it. <laughs> I knew it had something to do with bread. <laughs> something, to do, something to do with flour, right? Well, at any rate, today, today's conversation, gang, begins a series of seven conversations. Giovanni and I are committed to bringing to you a number of experts in seven simple things that we know to do that maybe we don't do or don't do as well as we know to do them. So this morning's all about revealing those seven things and we're going to play a little game. And I know I've got a couple of you in here who love to play games. So here's how the game's gonna go. When I say one of those things you already know, you're gonna go, ah, Sorrel, already know that. You promise? Go off mute and say, oh, Sorrel, I already know that. And then I'll ask you to tell me about what you already know about that step and how effectively you have been doing it or have not. And what we're going to be doing together is creating a context. We're mastering these seven simple things. We'll leave you, whether you're here live, in your home, wherever you are in life, leave you equipped with what you need to build wealth from wherever you are. That's the idea. Now, before we get into that, I have a few questions to ask you. Andrea, good morning. Good morning, Sorel. Where are you, my friend? Sorel, I am right here, which is where I need to be. Where else could you be? Move an inch, you're here. Move a mile, you are here. But are you really here when you're here? Now, that's a circular question. Don't, don't, don't go crazy about that. <laughs> now, Mr. Stacy Robinson, what time is it? Oh, the time is now. This is the only time that we have to operate and to build our better tomorrows. Absolutely. This is the time it is. Gio, I've got three questions for you, brother, before we lose you, if we are going to lose you. How are you? Who are you going to hug? And what are you grateful for? Sure, well, I am. Well, how am I? I am the way I say I am. And today I am optimistic. I say I am optimistic. I am going to hug you the entire family, Stefanito, Mayita, and my Manichita. And what was the other question? Uh, well, what are you grateful for? What am I grateful for? I'm grateful for planes. Planes. I am grateful. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having to walk from New York to Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be hugging Mama Sita for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes. uh, Gio, thank you for being my co-host and the co-founder of The Daily Huddle. Today, we're committed to making, well, as always, we're committed to making a profound difference in your relationship to money. And your relationship to money today, we're connecting to seven things, seven steps you already know. And... Maybe you don't do them, or maybe you don't do them as well as you'd like it to. Or maybe there's a framework in your finances to actually keep those steps alive for you. We begin today by outlining these seven steps. No mystery, I promise you, you know all of them. And each and every week, we'll come back and do a deep dive into each of the steps, creating seven weeks this summer where you anchor yourself in everything you need to be financially free and to build wealth in a way that is sustainable and in a way that you can bequeath to 
the generations to come. So Andrea, Stacy, you ready? All right? We, we are ready. You are ready, right? So I'm going to share the screen so the world can see. And, and we're going to play just as we said we would. So there we are. Personal income spending guide to building wealth. Now, thing zero is if you want to build wealth and you want to leave a financial legacy, you must first set a goal. Now, what do you say to that, Stacy? Well, I already know that, Sarah. Gosh, I knew you <laughs> did, right? <laughs> you already know that. But let me ask you a question, Stacy. <laughs> Yes, sir. What is your financial goal, my friend? What is your goal? I know I need to set a goal, and I have not set a goal. Well, that's that's the, the we're beginning to create what this conversation is all about, right? You may be coming to the daily huddle to get either instructions, to get more knowledge, and all that good stuff. Well, my good friend Giovanni and I, and every huddler. We traffic in this space and that space is called, there are really simple things to do, simple actions to take. And yet I say, I want a great life. I say, I want financial freedom. I say, I want to leave a legacy. And yet the simple things, the simple steps, the simple actions that will get me from A to Z, I know to take them and I don't. So we're not going to talk about that today. We're just going to play the game of seeing and discovering what we already know that we're not putting in action. So Stacy, that, that's thing zero, right? <laughs> you know to set a goal, but you, haven't, you don't have one yet. Now, I might ask you, uh, when are you going to set a goal? I am definitely going to set a goal this summer. This summer, well, Stacy, why not today? Like literally, you and I think that to set a goal, we have to plan setting a goal. Maybe uh, setting a goal is just something you want and you declare it and claim it. What if you gave yourself the permission to actually set a goal? and see how setting that goal, how saying that thing in the context of, I am the way I say I am, the world is the way I say it is, my finances, my finances are the way I say they are. What if you were to just wing it and set a goal right now? What would you say? I would test that. Come on, do, do it. All right. Do it. <laughs> I will set a goal of saving a million dollars by the end of my life. Can I do That's that? That's a beginning, right? That's a beginning. That's a beginning. And once you set that goal, it starts to shape your world. You can actually see in setting a goal like that, Stacy, that the next step that you already know might play a significant role. Take a right. look. <laughs> step one, budget. Budget. Andrea, do that thing. I know, I know. Need to be done. So well, I already know this, right? I already know this. Yep. You already know this. But can you see the connection between the goal you set, Stacy, and creating a budget? Now, what's funny about goals and achieving them is that once I set a goal, I may say to myself, there are certain conditions that must be met before I begin the journey of achieving that goal. Maybe there are no pre-conditions to be met before you can start working on achieving the goal. Step one is just step one, budgeting, creating a budget that includes the fulfillment of the goal. So step one is week one, 
We're going to include budgeting and goal setting for the next episode. So get ready. You already know it, but you may not be doing it or you may not be doing it as well as you'd like it to. And Giovanni and I and our guests are going to peel back the curtain on the mindset that keeps us from doing what we already know to do. And we're going to equip you with what you need to do exactly what you know to do. So step one is budgeting. Now let's take a look at the next one. You ready, you ready Stacey? I'm ready. Build an emergency fund. Oh, I already know that. Oh man, you gotta be more, you, 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 got, you, you gotta be a little more emphatic about that. Yeah. Darn it, man, I already know that. <laughs> I'll keep, yeah, I already know that, Sorrel. You telling me everything I already know. I know, I am telling you everything you already know. <laughs> but the question is, and thank you for playing, Stacy. Any one of you can can say the question is: Are you doing it? Are you actively building an emergency fund? Because you know what, stuff's gonna hit the fan. I do say how life goes by declaring my goal. But I also say how life goes by doing the things I know to do. Uh, so, Stacy, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to make you my partner this morning. Awesome. How are things going with that emergency fund? My emergency fund is looking really, really good. I actually have a year's worth of, of um, savings that will take care of my rent and utilities for an entire year. Ching, right? Now, uh, without going into the, the details of the story, how did you go about making that real for yourself, Stacy? <laughs> I, I was, I have been single for a very long time until very recently. And my freelance life has been very good. And I saved almost, I probably saved about 75% of all my freelance money and um, I don't spend a lot from my, my, um, my job savings. So that was a goal to save um, a year's worth of, of savings just in case anything were to happen. And um, I did that. And that was a conscious choice, right? So in the context of doing what you already know to do, from what Stacy shared, and Stacy, thank you for sharing. Can you see the simplicity of it? It was a goal, and I did the simple actions called save most of my freelance money, <laughs> don't spend my savings, <laughs> and there you are. You've got almost a year's worth of your uh, of of uh, living saved. So, uh, Ronald, welcome to the gig, man. Welcome to the conversation. Now, the way we're playing the game this morning, everything I see, now when I reveal the next step, you're gonna say, Sorrel, I already know this, man. You ready? Go for it. Now, wherever you work, if you work for a corporation, those corporations match your funds for savings in a retirement fund that is pre-taxed. Now, Ronald, tell me, man. I have already done that. And you already knew that. Yes. Question is, are you maximizing the contribution from the corporation? Meaning, are you contributing exactly as much as you need to contribute to get the maximum match from your company and no more? Very aggressive. I'm moving on that very aggressively. So I'm doing maximizing, I'm maximizing. You are maximizing. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. But guess I what, started, you already I knew that. Late. And you started late, but you already knew it before you started late, right? That's right. Exactly, that's the point we're making. Simple actions to build wealth, simple actions to create a future you love, regardless of your current level of income. Regardless of your current level of income, you can do these steps. 
Andrea, it's your turn. Pay down high interest debts. Thrill, I knew that. You knew that, you knew that. Now, knowing you, Andrea, I'm betting that not only have you done that, but you're probably debt free. Now, I may be guessing wrong. Tell me about that, Andrea. I actually made a conscious decision last year to get financial literal, like understand financials. And I joined the Freedom University thing. And yes, I pay down all my debt. Actually, I'm debt free as of two months ago. So I don't have, but I started it with a different, not just the high interest debt, but just from the small one to the, it's just different ways of getting rid yes. of debt. Doesn't matter how you do it. Just do it. Just so, yeah. do it. Now, you know now, it. how long did it take you to actually, from the point where you set that goal, committed to it, and you're now debt free? Uh, two years. Two years. Now, yes. Andrea, would you say that becoming debt free is something that anyone can do? Um, anyone who is committed. I don't think anyone can do it if you're not committed. So yes, if commitment anyone is first. Anyone can do it. But yes. Mm -hmm. So there is something about the mindset connecting to debt and my relationship to debt that would actually keep me from doing Absolutely. and taking very simple actions or doing them. Mm -hmm. So in week four, we'll be diving into that. And you know what, Andrea? You might be the guest for week four. Love it. Uh -huh. I am in. How I to be debt free, right? Yes, so, let's do it. Uh, Here's thing number five that you already know, but may not be or not doing as well as you'd like it to. Save for retirement. Now, who wants to chime in and say, Sorrel, you're telling me things I already know. Sorrel, you know you're telling us things we already know. Oh my God, Stacy, I'm going to kill you because there are two more things left. This is only thing number five, right? So save for retirement. There are many ways to do that. I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm not about to teach you how to do that. But I promise you, we're going to bring to the table experts on creating that in such a way that at any level of income, at any point you are in your life, you can do this. Now, here's the deal. Some of you may be really young. You've got time on your side. And you're going, yay, I can do this. And some of you may, may not be so young. Maybe you're beyond 50. And you may be saying to yourself, it's too late for me. And one of the ways our brain works is that when, quote unquote, I'm behind the eight ball, I throw my hands up in the air, I throw in the towel and I say, ah, this is not for me anymore. Past my prime, past my time. I don't need to do it. I'm already screwed. Yeah, we're going to deal with that in step five. Saving for retirement. And uh, Ronald, you mind if I pick on you? You go ahead. How's step five going in your world? Man, step five is, is uh, still a good... Um... It's still, it's still work in progress, still work in progress. Um, my, matter of fact, so you know, I'm, I'm using Alvin um, as one of my go-to guy to really help me working on that. You know, we've been shifting some money on that. So just being open and transparent about that and, um, and kind of better than it was a couple of months ago because I started to really make it you know, like presence, I, I started to really look at it, you know, with a magnified glass, mm. um, you know, knowing that I wasn't, I wasn't on it. I, I, I have been the avoider uh, in that area. But uh, <laughs> you know, I appreciate that, Ronald. I'm, you know, I'm, there's something funny about saving for retirement. While most of us 
want to save for retirement, we also secretly wish that we don't, we, we never get there. You know, I'm throwing that out there. It's like, you know what? Maybe if I, maybe if I just enjoy all my money now, I'll die before I need to retire. <laughs> that too. <laughs> I mean, how morbid could that be? But guess what? Your brain does go there. So step five is going to be about dealing with the mindset that keeps you from saving for retirement and creating the kind of mindset that makes saving for your retirement not just for you. What if saving for your retirement was for your spouse, for your children, for the next generation. The idea of creating legacy will not only look at saving for retirement, but will also look at what you, uh, you mentioned Alvin, uh, Ronald. Uh, Alvin will be one of our guests to actually take this portion of the seven steps and creating the space where you not only deal with the mindset, but you deal with the simple actions and anchor for yourself, as you mentioned, Ronald, uh, the idea of creating for yourself a magnifying glass that you have zeroing in on all those steps and seeing every time. See, building wealth is like flying a plane. You will always be off course. And it is the continual course adjustments time after time after time that actually makes it all possible. So step number six, do you guys think you know that one? Yeah, you do, yes, you do. Step number six is a repeat of step number eight. There are places you get to in your life. Let's say you've done step number four and five combined. And you've actually gotten to the point where, like Andrea, you are debt free. Well, the idea is to take the money you use to direct to pay debt to add to your retirement fund. So you create the space where you now have more money to invest for your retirement. That is step number six. And big drum roll for the very last step. That one, even though we know it, I think it's probably the one that we neglect because part of the mindset, which goes with the work ethic of an American, is that the harder I work, the better I am. We associate who we are with how hard we work. It's like, oh my God, if I take a vacation, I'm a bum. Oh my God, if I, if I go to Vegas and have a good time, I'm a sinner, whatever it is for you. I'm inviting you to consider going through these first six steps and get to the point where you create step number seven, which is save other goals like education, vacation, fun times with your spouse and significant others anything and everything that leaves you as a human being enjoying the life you're creating. When? Today. Andrea, did you already know that one? I sure did, Sorel. I knew that one. I know you knew that one. And would you share with us, what are some of those things you're saving for? I'm actually not saving for other goals yet because in my process of getting rid of debt, the next step is to build my emergency fund. So uh -huh. everything, like a gazelle, I'm intent in saving for my emergency fund. So until I don't get to that point, I will not do the others. Hey. I'm not taking, that, that's my process. <laughs> and that's not a, a problem. That's a promise you said, right? And exactly what it's about. So one of the things we'll share with you now, uh, if you watch 
if you watch Thursdays, Dr. Monica usually says, you know, uh, you, you, you can't be with me and not get a dose of X, Y, Z. Well, you can't be with me who comes from the world of an engineer and the world of a project manager and not get a flow chart. So I promise you at the end of this, well, during this, not the end of today's session, but during this, you're going to get one of those complicated flowcharts. So Andre is pointing to exactly what this flowchart will help you do. Which step comes before which step? And how do you execute them in succession and also account for the fact that they're interdependent? That is your next seven weeks, folks. And those are the seven things you already know that you don't do or not do as well as you'd like them to that keep you financially stuck. And now that we've revealed them, we still haven't made a big difference. You are the one who gets to make the biggest difference. And how do you make the biggest difference? Simple. Take the simple actions. Gio. Well, I already knew that. I already knew oh, that. Oh my God. You already knew that. that. I didn't know you knew that. <laughs> that is awesome. So, Gio, brother, before you get on the plane, are you on the plane? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Uh, anything you want to say, brother? Anything you want to add to this conversation? Well, what I was really hearing very loud, Sorel, today is that there's this gap between knowing and doing. And, um, and I love to explore that a little bit more on how to close the gap between knowing and doing. It was just so loud that it was a good insight for the opportunity of what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that that's the door we're opening. And I'm saying door as opposed to you know, can of worms? No, we're not opening up a can of worms. We're opening a door where once you discover, you know, this dilemma, I already know X, but I don't do X. Uh, you'll open up something phenomenal. So gang, it's 28 after. We will close in about two minutes. Anyone who has a comment or anyone who wants to say something, Andrea, I saw your note. I think it's going to be phenomenal. I'll give you a call after this so we can play. Uh, Stacy, you're off mute. What do you want to say, brother? I definitely want to say, I think it was step seven where you, you take the money that you use to pay off debt and flip that into your retirement. I'm definitely interested in that. That was fascinating to me. I knew that, but I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, there's something funny about knowing. It's like the very thing that Giovanni is pointing to. What I know, what I already know, may be the biggest barrier to my success. And I would also like to talk about the fear of retirement, because I think there's a fear for saving for retirement, because it's a fear of preparing for death. Mm. I know someone right here in this room that's an expert on that. That is great, Stacy. All right, gang. Well, we're right on the money. It's 930. This has been your daily huddle for Monday, Money Mondays. We got ready for seven straight weeks of diving into the seven things you know that you may not do or may not do as well as you like to. We're going to dive into the mindset that keeps you from doing them. And we're going to dive also into the tactics, the tools, the techniques, and the tried and true methods for building wealth wherever you are in your life. My co-founder and co-host is Giovanni Gonzalez. And we're going to close out with seven things, folks. I'm going to say them quickly, but you already know them. Love, laugh out loud, eat mostly plant-based, stress less, God darn it. Give, give everything you've got and get some sleep. And last but not least, shake what your mama gave you.
because you can. This is your daily huddle. Be ready for tomorrow. Vince and Rollin will be on and you're going to have a great time and you're going to get thinner. You're going to get, you're going to look better. I will see you tomorrow morning. Hi, All everybody. right. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. And we already knew that. We're going to see you tomorrow. We already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that keep you from being here. <laughs> Thank you, Sorrell. Cece. Bye. Bye-bye, Cece. <laughs>